Welcome to Fireside Gaming. I'm Billum, and this time around, I'm taking you all on a fun-filled nostalgia journey into Transformers for the PS2. I'm a big Transformers fan, having grown up watching several of the series and sticking with it for the most part to this day. My first experience with Transformers was watching the original movie on a VHS at my cousin's house. I basically wanted to watch it every time I went over there, so much so that it was eventually given to me and I still have it to this day. And while I did get to watch several bits and pieces of Transformers series over the years, it wasn't until Transformers Armada came out in 2002 that I got to sit down and watch one from beginning to end. Because of that, I have a bit of a soft spot for Armada as well as its sequels Energon and Cybertron. Adding to that is the fact that I had the Transformers Armada game, simply called Transformers, for the PS2 as a kid. This game largely follows its own story while making use of the Armada setting. So while it's not canon and the events in it that transpire aren't overly complex, I'm still giving a spoiler warning. Transformers keeps the same basic ideas that fuel the Armada TV show. Millions of years ago, Minicons, tiny Transformers with tremendous power, fled to Earth. A signal is picked up by the battling Autobots and Decepticons, and they both rush to the planet to find the miniature machines. While tracking the Minicons, Optimus Prime, Hotshot, and Red Alert cross paths with the Decepticon Cyclonus. Rather than fight himself, he sends one of the heavy-hitting Decepticons to take care of them. Before they can continue to track down Cyclonus, a Minicon signal averts their attention. It's here that they meet Sparkplug, Jolt, and Longarm. Each of them teams up with one of the Autobots in their battle with the Decepticons. From here, the Autobots head out to Antarctica, where they've picked up more Minicon signals. But of course, the Decepticons are already there searching for Minicons too. This comes to a head with Starscream battling against the Autobots before a not-so-permanent defeat. After this, the Autobots return to a deeper part of the Amazon to continue their hunt for Cyclonus. They find him atop an Aztec temple and a battle erupts even if that fight doesn't always stay at the top of the temple. With Cyclonus defeated, the Autobots track the Decepticlone carriers to a string of islands in the Mid-Atlantic Ocean. While exploring these islands, they find a massive aircraft carrier and make their way aboard. After clearing out the troops inside, the ship transforms to reveal its true identity as the gigantic Decepticon warrior Tidal Wave. And while he's no pushover, the Autobots prove once again that there's more to them than meets the eye. Based on recent data collected, the Autobots believe that Megatron's base is in Alaska. While they search the Arctic Wonderland for the location, their trip is cut short by the returned Starscream. He crashes a spaceship into a cliff in an effort to crush the Autobots. Not content to let Starscream's actions go unpunished, the Autobots battle their way through the Decepticlone forces in the ship until they make their way to the command center. While inside, they are attacked by Starscream, but the battle doesn't last long. The scuffle sends the spaceship plunging off the edge of the cliff, and its remains are stuck vertically in the Alaskan ice. This has the Autobots ascending up the now-turned ship to escape and squaring off against Starscream once again when exiting the vessel. With Starscream defeated for a second time, Optimus demands the location of Megatron's base. Starscream refuses to give it away and earns himself a punch in the face for his trouble. Red Alert hacks Starscream's warp transponder and backtracks the signal to Megatron's base, which is located on a Pacific island. With Megatron's location now known, the Autobots prepare for one final battle with the Decepticon leader. After climbing higher and higher up this island and battling through more enemies than ever before, they finally come face to face with Megatron in the heart of an active volcano. While the battle with Megatron is fierce, it's interrupted by the volcano erupting. This sends Megatron falling towards the lava. Optimus attempts to save him, but Megatron's pride won't allow it. He breaks free from Optimus's grip and plummets into the magma below. While Megatron and the rest of the Decepticons are defeated, the trouble isn't over just yet for the Autobots. Their ancient enemy, the planet-eating Unicron, is approaching Cybertron. With their world in danger, the Autobots make it their mission to save Cybertron, and the galaxy, with the help of the Minicons. This has the Minicons powering up the Autobots, allowing them to fly through space and battle Unicron. By flying into the mouth of the beast, they're able to target his very core. Doing so damages the planet-sized threat and sends him careening off into space, where he explodes shortly afterwards. With Unicron dead and the Decepticons defeated, Optimus, Hotshot, and Red Alert celebrate alongside their rescued Minicon friends. 
As I said, the story of Transformers on PS2 isn't an overly complex one. And while it makes use of minicons and other aspects of the Armada cartoon, it leaves out a lot as well. Like the complete lack of any humans whatsoever. Truth be told, that doesn't really bother me in the least, but I do have to mention it as it's a bit strange to exclude them. The gameplay of Transformers might not be what players first expect when loading it up. Yes, it is a third-person shooter, but that's only scratching the surface. Rather than forcing players through straightforward levels, Transformers offers them seven levels to play through that each act as miniature sandboxes to explore. Depending on how much exploring players do, each of these levels can take between half an hour and a full hour to run through the first time. But players are definitely going to want to revisit levels even after clearing them. That's due to the minicons that players can uncover on subsequent visits. Each of these minicons have their own abilities that benefit the player. Some change up combat by altering the character's main blaster, others act as additional artillery during combat, and there's even defensive options for shields and such. But what's most important are the ones that net players extra movement options. With these, players can gain the ability to glide across long distances or dash around areas. These open up new areas and levels that players couldn't reach their first times through. To put it in simple terms, Transformers is a third-person shooter that takes inspiration from collectathons and Metroidvanias. It's always fun to return to old levels and find even more powerful minicons that can make future battles more manageable. And there's more to discover than just minicons. Spread throughout the levels are also datacons. These offer a wide collection of extras that players can explore. That includes prototypes of Armada toys, uh, tie-in comics, character profiles, as well as TV spots from the G1 Transformer series. That last one is fun, as the spots are public service announcements in the same vein as what G.I. Joe showed at the end of its episodes. They even include the whole, and knowing is half the battle line. And to top it off, this game was one of the first times these TV spots were seen, as they never aired like they were supposed to back in the 80s. Besides just running back for collectibles, I spent a lot of time just messing around and fighting Decepticlones to try out new weapons. One of my personal favorites is the Grapple Beam. It lets you pick up enemies and throw them, which typically ends in their death. There's also a cheat for an extended version that lets players grab enemies from even further away. With this, you can easily sling an enemy across the level and watch them blow up in the distance. And there's plenty of other fun cheats that players can use to further enjoy Transformers. For example, the game features an infinite boost option. With this, you can even drive straight up waterfalls in the deep Amazon. Big Head Mode is also available, as it should be in every game. Another cheat removes the energy cap from minicons, which lets you bring all of the most powerful ones into battle. That's because each minicon has a power draw ranging from 1 to 4. Optimus, Hotshot, and Red Alert can each equip 4 minicons. One of the minor variances is that some characters have higher energy loads than others. For example, Optimus has the highest, meaning he can equip more powerful minicons at once. And while that might seem like playing Optimus is the best option, there are merits to Hotshot and Red Alert. Hotshot is the quickest of the Autobots, and Red Alert can traverse steep terrain in his vehicle mode. By comparison, Optimus is a bit clunky with his slow and heavy movements. And all three of them can smash into enemies while in vehicle mode, but Optimus has the easiest time with his extra weight, giving him more force. Honestly, this game really captures transforming right. There's just something so satisfying about ramming through a group of Decepticlones, transforming to robot mode, and then blasting away at the remaining enemies. Every time I do it, I'm reminded of that classic scene of Optimus Prime doing the exact same thing to the Decepticons in the G1 movie. I should also mention real quick that another incredibly entertaining part of Transformers is its ragdoll physics. I don't know who thought it was a good idea to put these on giant transforming robots, but I'm all for it. It makes for some incredibly funny moments with robots flailing through the air. I won't deny that it can be annoying if you get stuck in a loop with enemies continuously knocking you down, but that doesn't happen too often. Transformers also has its fair share of boss battles with plenty of variety. Sure, you might fight Starscream twice, but he changes tactics in the second battle. The standoff with Megatron is also a solid one that offers a fair amount of challenge, and the fight against Tidal Wave blew me away as a kid, and is still mechanically fun today. One thing I will note about Transformers is its difficulty, specifically the options available to players. They're listed as Recruit, Veteran, and Professional. Play on Recruit. Always. It's the normal mode option, even if it doesn't sound like it by the name. I made the mistake of playing Veteran this time around, and it's just bullet sponges and an exponential increase in enemies. 
Sure, it's beatable, but it's not as enjoyable as playing on Recruit. I'll also note that Transformers is a surprisingly good-looking PS2 game. The levels are wide open for exploration, and it manages to maintain a fairly stable frame rate even when there's extra action on the screen. Sometimes it can get a bit washed out with all of the extra light, but that's not something you notice too much while playing. And if you love the voice cast of Transformers Armada, you'll be glad to know that they return for this game. Gary Chalk is a great Optimus Prime, and David Kay kills it as Megatron. The game even has some fun with direct quotes from the 80s movies. And while those have maybe been relied on a bit too much over the years, that wasn't the case when this game came out, it was just a fun callback instead. Something else that surprises me is how well the soundtrack in Transformers holds up. There's a good bit of music in this game, with most of it being great as background tracks. That's perfectly fitting for the wide open levels players explore. Then there's the heavier tracks that kick in during boss battles with clear influences from electronic and metal genres. Each boss gets their own unique theme that perfectly fits their stage and encounter. Of them, Starscream really sticks out to me as just being so freaking awesome. Overall, Transformers for the PS2 is an amazingly good game. I've got no reservations about recommending it to both fans of the franchise and newcomers alike. It offers so much fun with its sandbox style levels, third-person shooter and driving gameplay, and unique collection of minicons to unlock. If you run across a copy of it out in the wild, make sure to pick it up for peak PS2 goodness. Thanks for stopping by for my review of Transformers on the PS2. And as always, take it easy.